Yeah, hello? Babe, hello? Channel 9.5 Breaking News. Reports are beginning to come in of biochemical attacks occurring throughout the country. The scale of the damage is still yet unknown, but one thing is clear, we are under attack. I'm waking up to ash and dust. I wipe my brow and I sweat my rust. I'm breathing in the chemicals. <laughs> body produces fatty acids. Now we all know that fatty acids are very important in lipid production as it takes one glycerol plus three fatty acids to make a lipid. Now with that said, first we shall start off our presentation by stating that the body doesn't necessarily need to make fatty acids because we get it from our diet. This is interesting enough but still the body still produces it. Now where do we start? The first step when the body is ready to produce fatty acids is it must convert acetyl-CoA into malonyl-CoA, a two carbon compound into a three carbon compound. Where does the extra carbon come from? The body uses carbon dioxide. An enzyme known as acetyl-CoA carboxylase will attach a carbon dioxide molecule to acetyl-CoA converting it into malonyl-CoA. Now we will start by noting that this is called the committed step. The only commitment in my life, right guys? Anyway, with that said, this is also the rate determining step and as such, we can see that ACC, acetyl-CoA carboxylase, is the most regulated enzyme. This is correct. Now what this does is, once malonyl-CoA has been created, it cannot go back. Because we all know that acetyl-CoA is involved in the link reaction in the Krebs cycle. But once the body has converted the acetyl to malonyl, there is no turning back. Fatty acids must now be created. But what is it in the body that would de decipher whether to make fatty acids or not? The overall picture, my colleagues, is the fasting state versus the well-fed state. We make fatty acids to store energy and we store energy when we have too much energy. Therefore, it is only in the fed state, the well-fed state, when the energy in the cell is high that it inhibits 
acetyl-CoA from entering into the Krebs cycle. And as such, malonyl CoA is produced. Good. Now, we must know that this carboxylase enzyme is a bifunctional enzyme having two active sites. And attached in the middle of it is the cofactor called biotin. The biotin is an arm that into the center of the acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme. And this swings from the two active sites as ACC we found to be a bifunctional enzyme. Yes, this is correct. And my team has also worked and found that the biotin attaches to the carbon dioxide molecule in the active site called biotin carboxylase. This will now swing over to the transcarboxylase active site of the enzyme, two active sites, bifunctional. And what this does is it will attach the carbon dioxide to the acetyl CoA, producing malonyl CoA. Good. Now that we have finally made malonyl CoA, it is time to start making these carbon chain fatty acids. And how we do this, the body has a multiple polypeptide chain, multifunctional enzyme called fatty acid synthase. This comprise, this large molecule is comprised of six active sites. However, it reacts seven different reactions. This is because one active site can do two products. Now, what are the advantages of this large molecule? One, it is more stable. It prevents something called substrate theft, where instead of the product being released into solution to react somewhere else, it can easily be transferred into the next respective active site in the chain. And thirdly, it is more efficient as stated before because when one substrate comes and a product is formed, it can immediately enter the following active site. And so time and energy is saved. Good. But this must attach itself to a carrier protein. And what happens is the malonyl CoA will attach to the the acetyl CoA will attach to the carrier protein first. The acetyl CoA is first used as a primer, not after. And in every cycle, two carbon units are attached. Therefore, you can only produce even chain fatty acids. My team has also found that these can only be saturated. No double bonds. And last but not least, the longest chain can only be 16 lengths. Therefore, it is only 8 cycles that fatty acid synthase can work with. We will call this palmitate. Yes, palmitate is a fitting name. Now, the, when the acetyl-CoA is attached to the carrier protein, malonyl-CoA can now come and react on the top and release a carbon dioxide. Now, mind you that malonyl is 3 carbons. And when it attaches, it releases a carbon dioxide leaving only two. And so for every cycle, only two is attached over and over. And so the two carbon chain increases evenly. This will this cycle will repeat itself eight times as the maximum is 16 carbons in palmitate. And when the reaction is finished, when the reaction is finally finished, an enzyme called Palmitoyl thiol esterase will come and hydrolyze the fatty acid off of the carrier protein and so it will be released to make lipids or to be stored as in adipose tissue. Thank you gentlemen for your time and patience and allowing me to conduct the hard work that my research team has so greatly put in. And Professor Nick, I hope and I implore you to make the right decision. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about beta oxidation. So what do you need to know about beta oxidation? Well, beta oxidation is the breakdown of the long chain fatty acids. And it does this by removing two carbon fractions at a time. So for every round of beta oxidation, you are going to be removing two carbons from um, the long chain fatty acid. Now, the real mechanics of beta oxidation, uh, where it occurs? Well, it occurs within the matrix of the mitochondria. 
but getting your long chain fatty acid into the matrix is, well, how should we say, difficult. But there are mechanisms in place to make sure that it gets there. So in order for this long chain fatty acid to make its journey into the matrix of the mitochondria, it must first go into the cell, into the mitochondria. So you get your long chain fatty acid, it goes into the cytosol of the mitochondria. Now from the cytosol, in the cytosol I should say, it is processed. And what occurs here is that your long chain fatty acid is processed by an enzyme called thiokinase. And what thiokinase does is that it turns this long chain fatty acid into a long chain fatty acyl CoA derivative. So it pretty much adds a CoA group to your long chain fatty acid. So now you have the beginnings or, or the form that it needs to be in so that it can be processed via beta oxidation to be broken down. So now you have it in the cytosol, you have your long chain fatty acyl CoA derivative and you need to get it into the mitochondrial matrix from the cytosol. Standing in the way is the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now the problem occurs here is that this uh, inner mitochondrial membrane is CoA impermeable which means that anything with a CoA group will not be able to cross this. So the body has certain mechanisms in place to uh, bypass this or to control this. What it has in place is called a carnitine shuttle. Now a carnitine shuttle is a transport protein. It is a positive anti-porter protein by which you can transport your long chain uh, fatty acid CoA from the cytosol into the mitochondria. So it does this uh, in the following ways. It uses an enzyme called CPT1. Now CPT1, what it does is that it replaces the kind of the CoA group, sorry. So it replaces the CoA group from the fatty acyl CoA with a carnitine molecule or a carnitine group. So now the carnitine now via CPT1 can be moved into the mitochondria via this transmembrane protein. Uh, also that should be uh, importantly noted is that CPT1 uh, is the most regulated enzyme in beta oxidation and that is because of the following. It is the rate determining step. The use of CPT1 determines the rate of beta oxidation. This means that beta oxidation will only occur as fast as this particular step. So it is also the slowest step, hence the rate is determined by this step. So now via CPT1 and the carnitine shuttle, you now have your long chain fatty acyl uh, carnitine uh, derivative inside of the mitochondrial matrix. And now you need to get it back in the form of a fatty acyl CoA derivative so that you can process it via beta oxidation. Now, here is where you use the second part of the carnitine shuttle enzymes and that is called CPT2. Now what CPT2, it pretty much does the reverse of CPT1 and that is it that it replaces now the carnitine group with a fatty with a CoA group sorry so now you have a fatty acyl CoA within the mitochondrial matrix and so that now you can start the real mechanics of beta oxidation and start to break it down so now that we have the fatty acyl CoA derivative inside of the mitochondrial matrix uh, the real mechanics of beta oxidation begins now, let's say we had a 16 carbon long chain fatty acid, which uh, at this point will be uh, palmitoyl CoA. Now, there are four enzymatic reactions that would go into, into removing these two carbon uh, fragments. First of all, we are using a, an enzyme called acyl CoA dehydrogenase. Now, this uses FAD uh, as a cofactor, and so that is your first uh, enzymatic reaction and that removes a carbon from the beta um, from the beta strand uh, of the of the molecule hence beta oxidation you are oxidizing the beta carbon also it should be kept in mind that when you are counting carbons you are counting from the carbonyl end so you have alpha beta in that order now that's the first enzymatic reaction the second enzymatic reaction is done by an enzyme called enol coa hydratase and of course hydratase, so it is going to be using uh, water, H2O, as a cofactor. Now, the uh, third enzymatic uh, reaction is done by an enzyme called beta hydroxide coa 
hydrogenase. Hydrogenase, therefore, you are removing the water. And so you're using a cofactor called NAD+. Plus. And this NAD+, plus is going to NADH+, plus, plus H+. Plus. And so that is your third enzymatic reaction and your final enzymatic reaction. In this one round of beta oxidation is going to be acyl-CoA acyl transferase. And this uses a CoA um, as a cofactor. And so this happens uh, over a certain amount of time depending on the amount of carbons uh, there. Now the turn, the turns, how many, however many turns of beta oxidation you need is dependent upon a formula. N over 2 minus 1 where N is your number of carbons. So let's say you have palmitol CoA which is a 16 carbon um, derivative then it will be N over 2, 16 over 2 which is 8 minus 1. You have 7 turns of beta oxidation to fully remove uh, uh, each of the uh, two carbon fractions to get acetyl CoA. Now you might ask how does this actually produce energy? Well, for every turn in the TCA, one mole of uh, acetyl CoA will give uh, three NADH, one FADH2, and one e uh, ATP molecule. Now, ATP already is uh, is the energy currency, so we don't have to worry about that. However, the three NADH and the one FADH2 need to be turned into ATP. Uh, thankfully, we have a system called the electron transport chain in which one NADH gives 3 ATP and one FADH2 gives 2 ATP. Therefore, by this math, uh, a compound such as palmitoyl CoA will give 129 ATP. Hence, uh, long-chain fatty acids are extremely energy dense, therefore uh, being a uh, more efficient store of energy than, let's say, carbohydrates or something like that. And now, finally, let's talk about uh, the carnitine shuttle one more time and this time we'll talk about it uh, in respect to how it is inhibited. Now it is inhibited by malonyl CoA. This means that when the when malonyl CoA is present i.e. when fatty acid synthesis is taking place you will have no beta oxidation taking place at the same time because if you're making fat you don't want to be burning your product at the same time. And with that gentlemen brings me to the end of my presentation. Good day. Hey Brian, we'll get game tomorrow. <sighs> Gonna see Alexis tonight. Send. Nice. <sighs> Alexis! Alexis! <laughs> 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 You're so funny! <laughs> <laughs> Alexis! <laughs> it's not what it's... It's not what? It's not what it looks like? Because from what I see here, my best friend and my girl pull around. <sighs> I, I remember all this theater. Honestly, you see this on Facebook thing? I got bound this like theater. Uh, uh, you know who I am? You know what I can do? I can best by a chemist in this country. I can do things to you. I can do things to people. I'm gonna make both of you regret this day. Swear. Swear no. I'm gonna make both of you just dread this whole day. I'm gonna destroy you and you and everything you ever loved. Look, 
I know that everything that I did was wrong. I'm, I'm terribly sorry about it. It's been so long. But do you think that we can be friends? No. We can't. He took away everything I thought about in this room. But maybe you're right. Or maybe I was right back then. Maybe, maybe if you're not doing science to help the world, then it doesn't make any sense at all. Learn from my mistake, Brian. Maybe I did something wrong. But now you have to make ends for what you did so many years ago. Now you need to make things right. Do good at this world, Brian. It's too late for me. Ha <laughs> ha